Welcome back to another camera channel. Today, we're going to be talking about this, my 4K live streaming setup in a flight case. Yes, if you recall back to last video, which was about the web presenter 4K, you may recall I said this. I, I think you're really going to enjoy this product. And yeah, I'm super excited for putting this into a rack and having it all nice and tidy and put away. And yes, I've actually gone and done it. This is an 8U flight case, or an 8 rack unit flight case. And I've pretty much got everything in there already pre-wired, ready to go whenever I need to go on a streaming job, which is going to save me time, it's going to save me money. It just makes everything way more easy. So if you're interested in building one of these, well, this may be the video for you because I'm going to be talking about how I built this and everything that goes into it and the skills I needed to learn to actually make this build. Before we get into it, this is the total cost of everything that went into making this build. But don't get too scared about this price because you may have different components and different needs for your flight case, so your price may be drastically different to mine. So without further ado, let's get into it. So looking at the front of the box here, you can see I have my company logo laser engraved in the front of the flight case. And to be honest, apart from that, there isn't much else to say. It has some side handles. Um, it is incredibly heavy uh, with everything inside it. Uh, it's quite a struggle to move it around. But to me, it does beat carrying around a couple of bags with loose components or boxes of stuff and unpacking them and rewiring them every time. So the weight is worth it for me. I could have gone with a larger case with wheels, a 10U uh, case with wheels was an option. I only went with 8U, and I'm pretty sure I'm happy with an 8U for now. There is still space in there for me to add extra units if I wanted to, um, but for the most part, I think I'm pretty happy with how it is at the moment. But I will be doing some upgrades to it in the future. So let's open it up. Isn't she beautiful? I am really happy with how it turned out. And I put a good month or, um, or more into finding the right components for the build. So a brief introduction, if you don't mind. At the top, we have our air cooling AC Infinity Extractor Fan. This helps remove hot air from the inside. We have our Web Presenter 4K on the right hand side, a Hyperdeck Studio HD Mini on the left side, a branded faceplate, which I also laser etched, we have a CAT6A Ethernet patch panel, a Ubiquiti PoE16 switch, another patch panel with USB 3.0, USB-C, and some chargers, and also four headphone outputs. And on the other side, we have... At the top, we have the power distribution strip here, and that's a eight output uh, strip at the top. We then have a panel which lets me run cables from the power into the inside of the case, and that's covered by this brush type material here. We have another branded faceplate. And then you can see the back end of the shelf, which is holding a lot of components, and we'll go into the details of what is on there in a few minutes. And then we have two more patch panels, and this is where the SDIs and the HDMIs go. And as you can see, I've already connected some of the HDMIs together, um, running signals from one place to another. And this is what I really wanted to achieve with this build, was having the functionality where I could change where signals were going. So everything on inside the flight case is pre-wired to the patch panels. And then by changing these connecting small HDMI cables or SDI cables, I can reconfigure what I want on the fly for different types of scenarios. So we have all the inputs of the ATEM Mini Extreme on the bottom there. And then at the top, I have all the outputs for the devices and stuff like that. So it's all kind of labeled, I know what they are. So it's super simple for me to change which device is plugged into which input. Uh, and I've loved it so far, it saved me so much time. Let's turn it back around to the front and turn it on. So this is what I love the most about this, is I can just flick one switch and everything is gonna turn on. 
There is one more thing I need to add to make sure everything works properly. Okay, now everything is turned on. And the only thing I had to add was this Wi Fi router. Uh, because this controls one, the Wi Fi, and also gives everything its kind of IPs on in the inside. I have set static IPs in uh, in the router and on some of the devices, uh, but this kind of makes sure everything can communicate and I don't have to change any settings every time I turn it back on. This is one of the parts of this product which is kind of still a work in progress for me. Because I have a Ubiquiti switch, I was looking into getting a USG, which will kind of act as the kind of router uh, for the whole system, but they're kind of hard to get hold of right now. And at the moment, I can rely on my Wi-Fi router here uh, to do that job for me, and I still need Wi-Fi for some uh, things that connect into the system. So eventually I may change that, but for now it works pretty well. So this is what it sounds like when everything is turned on. And I think this is an acceptable level of noise. There are quite a few devices in here with their own fans, and it can get quite hot in there, but by using this uh, air extractor at the top, it does help things stay cool. And there is a temperature uh, probe in there, so if it gets too hot, the fans can ramp up. And this may be bad uh, for some people, um, so there are options to turn that off. Uh, but this is level two, and for me, this is quite good. But if I start turning the fan speed up, you'll start to hear it louder and louder. But if this was not in the same room as the actual production that's happening, I think having fans on loud wouldn't be too much of an issue. But let me just turn it up so you can hear. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a plane is trying to take off. Um, but if you put it down to zero, obviously there's not going to be any noise from the fans at the top. And then one or two is an acceptable level for me. So I like that. I'm going to turn them down. I'm going to turn them off for now as uh, nothing's happening. It's not too hot in here either. So let's go through all the components and I'll tell you what they do and why I have them. So at the top, we have the fan and that job's pretty obvious. It keeps things on the inside cool. With everything running, it can get kind of hot in there and we don't want things overheating. On the left, we have the Hyperdeck Studio HD Mini and that has two functions. Uh, what it can do is it can play back uh, videos that have been pre-loaded on there on the SD cards or on SSDs. Uh, so that could be stuff like looping backgrounds or, or like the advert breaks or anything like that that we would need to play out. And its other job is recording, and that's what I would mainly use it for. It's quite nice to be able to hit record and get a nice high quality recording of everything that's going out on stream. I have an empty space in the middle here where I could add another hyperdeck or even another web presenter if I wanted to, if I wanted to do two streams at the same time. Uh, at the moment, I've left it blank. If I would get anything, I think it would be an Ultra Studio Mini or something like that, where it, I can get key and fill for graphics, which because inside this case right now, there isn't really anything for graphics at the moment. And that's something I am trying to work on. And then we have the Web Presenter 4K, which controls all the encoding for the stream. And if you watch the video up here, you can learn all about that. But its best feature by far is to be able to encode and stream in 4K, even if you're using an HD input signal. Underneath that, we have the faceplate, and that's basically there to cover the hole that would be there. And that basically looks into the box, and you can see some of the components which are on the shelf. Underneath that, we have the Cat6A patch panel, and this is providing me with locations to plug in Ethernet cables to things from the inside. So instead of just running the cables straight from the switch through a hole, um, this makes it a lot prettier. And you know, it just nice cable management, it, you know, something nice to look at. And, I can have other devices plugged in on the inside which don't necessarily need to be plugged in all the time. So no loose cables, it's all nice and tidy. Then we have the switch here. I went with this Ubiquiti PoE 16 port switch and this actually powers some of the things on the shelf on the inside, mainly the two Raspberry Pis I have on the inside uh, which have Companion Pi and Playout be running on them. And then I have on this patch panel, I have USBs, uh, which are plugged into the back of some of the devices in here. So the web presenter and the ATEM. And then I also have some USB-Cs, 
uh, which are again plugged into things like the Hyperdeck and the ATEM as well. And that's going to give me the functionality of plugging SSDs for recording uh, on either of the devices. And these ones are mainly for me to change settings on stuff like the web presenter so I can just plug my laptop in and change the stream key, things like that. And then further on, I have two ports which are only there for 5 volt charging. Uh, so if I ever need to charge some labs real quickly, like the wireless goes, I can just plug them in and they'll start charging perfectly fine there. And on the far side, I have four headphone ports, and they're plugged into a Behringer four-way headphone splitter. Um, so that provides me four headphone outs for anyone who needs to listen to what's going on on the stream. And then here I have this pull-out shelf, and this holds the Atom Mini Extreme ISO and the two stream decks I'm using in conjunction with Companion to control a lot of things that are going on inside the box. And if you don't know what Companion is, I'm going to be making a video all about it, but it is a very powerful piece of software, and it basically allows me to control lots of the functions of lots of different things inside this box from one place. So I can change super source inputs and layouts. I can change stuff on audio controls. I can start and stop streams, start and stop recordings. It can do so much, and it's actually completely free. So this is the shelf that I have inside the rack. And this is a shelf from AC Infinity. And this is basically holding a lot of the internal components. So I'm talking about these power supplies here and here. This is for 12 volt, and this is for 5 volt. And I'm using them to power the Hyperdeck and the WebPresenter 4K from one device instead of having them all having their own power adapters that need to go to the power distribution unit. Um, I'm doing them internally instead to save those ports on the outside for other things. The 12 volt power supply is also powering the four-way headphone splitter from Behringer and the two Apple TVs I have here. One is an Apple TV 4K and the other one is an original Apple TV from a very, very long time ago. And these are for people who want to share like screens or iPhones via AirPlay to the stream. So that's why I have those four. And then over here I have two Raspberry Pis. One has Companion on it and the other one has Playout B. And Playout B is for playing out looping backgrounds or videos and Companion is the control center for everything inside the box. As you can see, I have these short Ethernet cables here, and they connect to the patch panel. The 5 volt unit here is powering lots of stuff. It's powering both of my mini converters here. One is an SDI to HDMI mini converter, and the other one is an HDMI to SDI mini converter, both from Blackmagic. And also these two USB cables which run to the 5 volt chargers on the front of the case. It's fairly easy to attach things to this shelf. I just use Velcro and then found the right place uh, where I wanted them. Um, the most complicated thing about this is connecting all the cables and stuff on the inside and making sure it looks all nice and neat and tidy. For everything inside the build, I've managed to use only two lengths of HDMI cable, 60 centimeters and 30 centimeters. 30 centimeters I'm using for mostly patch cables on the outside and 60 centimeters for everything on the inside. For SDI cables, I'm only using Kinair brand products, and I went with the L-2.5 CHD cable, which is ultra flexible and very thin while still being 12G capable. I paired the cable with the matching BCP B25HD connectors. And I highly recommend you use the Kinair TS100U stripper. It has different size settings on here to strip the cable, and it does it perfectly. Uh, I think you'll definitely have hard trouble trying to use third-party ones. It is quite expensive, but it's worth it in the long run. The only thing here not Kinair is the crimping tool, and I got this off Amazon, and it works for me. I'll put a link to it in the description below. To buy the dies for this type of cable and the connectors, the die would have cost me over $100, so I didn't want to spend that money just yet, so I went with a third-party crimping tool. It worked for me, but if you have the money, I'd go for the Kinair one. Special shout out to Doug Johnson Productions. Go check out his video up here to see how to terminate SDI cables. For Ethernet or Ethernet cables, I went everything CAT6 or CAT6A as much as possible. These products I purchased in Korea, so you might have to get different ones. But this crimping tool I got from Amazon in a starter kit. But I would actually recommend just getting just the crimper as I didn't actually use any of the other parts of the starter kit apart from the wire cutters. And if you need to learn how to terminate your own Ethernet cables, go watch this video up here from Network Chuck.
The only other thing I had to learn was to calculate how much power draw was coming from all the devices inside the rack. And this determined what size of power distribution I needed for the 12 volt and 5 volt boxes. So if you don't know, this is the equation. Learn how to use it and work out how much power you need for your setup. So that was an overview about my 4K streaming setup in a flight case. If you're looking to purchase any of the items in this build, there'll be Amazon affiliate links in the description box. And if you have any questions about the build or anything at all, leave them in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And please remember to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.